Thank you so much, my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Mtai. What a privilege to stand before God's people and uh, take this uh, rare, poorly understood, highly stigmatized area of the mind. Uh, I am here and I want to appreciate that the church can now understand really and see the role of the mind even in our Christian walk and the hope of the family. Christ's ministry consisted of three areas, the preaching, the teaching, and the healing. And indeed, if there is healing, then it means people get sick. And if people get sick, it is not only the physical, but now we are looking at another area that has been neglected for a very long time, the mind. Uh, the, I want to start with the book of second, uh, th the third epistle according to John, chapter uh, verse 2, which John is writing to us, me and you, as he wrote that time to his friend Gai uh, uh, Gaius. He says, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all, all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. This, I believe, is the wish for each one of us, and that is why health has been integrated in our, uh, our, our talks, including the family life, we are talking about hope. My friend, I want to tell you that you can only understand there is hope when your mind is okay. If the mind is not okay, then you may not even appreciate what hope is. And that is where we are integrating mental health in this, uh, uh, this week. And I am happy for those who are in there in the morning. Our powerful speaker has put the, the theme for this, uh, this week, have, using three words, build, establish, and the what? And flourish. I also want to follow that and use three words as far as mental health is com concerned. That please be aware, that is the first word. Creating awareness, be aware accept that the mind is there and take action. So mine will be three A's. Aware, accept, and take action. When you hear somebody saying accepting, it means that for a very long time we have been in denial. Or we have decided not to accept that issues of the mind are there and they are very important. If you recall the WHO definition of health, which John is writing to us, he says that it is not just a mere absence of disease or infirmity, but it's a state of being physically, socially, and mentally well-being. The part of mental for a very long time, people don't talk about it because it is thought not to exist. If I had time, sometimes I ask somebody to tell me the mind, what is the mind, the definition, and I want you to imagine and define the mind yourself in a few seconds. What is a mind? Because that is where we drive the issues of mental from. Mental is about the mind. If somebody asks you to define the mind, just divine, but I don't know what you have divined. And it goes along with what we know very well about the brain. All of us know the brain, as this about it many times, and we can appreciate and accept that yes, there are diseases of the brain, but are there diseases of the mind? I am here to confirm and tell you, yes, the mind may not necessarily be an organ, but it has diseases. Uh, in this era of computers, allow me to just Simplify it so that you can appreciate the role of the mind and where it is found. The mind is software of the brain. <laughs> Those who have dealt with the, the computer, I believe now we are together. It is the software of the brain, whereas the brain now is the hardware. And in that then, just the way the computer has issues with the hardware, it also has issues with the software, which includes the viruses. I just want you to, to go, work with me so that you can be able to appreciate when I will be going deeper, talking about mental health. 
So we see the mind as a software of the brain and, uh, and using the computer as our, our, our analog, an, an analogy. Meaning that the issues of the mind cannot be touched, cannot be felt, they cannot be seen, yet they exist. That is exactly what the software of the, the, the computer is, those who know about the computer. And this helps me so that we can be able to walk along with you. When we talk about mental health and mental health issues, it means these are issues many at times when you go to the hospital and somebody is trying to explain your, your issues or your symptoms, your pain, your vomiting, your diarrhea and all those things. We check them in the laboratory and we check blood, we check stool, we go to the x-rays and do x-rays, MRIs, CT scan and name it. We can only pick the hardware part of it because the software cannot be picked in any of those. And when these things are, are, are checked and you say we can't see anything, then many at times we wonder what is the problem with me then? Because that is exactly what you are told in the hospital. We have checked everything. We have done investigations. My colleagues who are there, others are my teachers, that we have really checked everything and we can't see anything. Is it really true that there is nothing with you, given the definition of health that is a state of social, mental, and physical? Many at times it's only the physical part of it that one has ruled out a problem. My friends, there is nobody who is going to, put, to pick social issues in your blood. Hello? <laughs> yeah, nobody will see a social issue in your blood. No, as they say, at the same time, mental health issues will not be seen in your blood. And that is why for a very long time, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions that have been associated with issues of the mind. That when you can't see anything, then it means that person is not okay, only that it can be explained maybe with witchcraft and many other things. And because I'm in church, and then the issues of demons. Yes, I am here to say that yes, besides those two witchcraft and the other people call it children, whatever, and demons, there is something beyond that that is affecting you as a person because the mind is not easily uh, explained by the routine investigations that we go about. And that is why today I'm here that, that I may create this awareness that the mind is to be considered and taken seriously the way we have taken serious our physical ailments or disorders. One time in a church like this, allow me to give you a story as I continue to explain more. In my church, not the current one. We were almost finishing a Sabbath like now. And then uh, I'm trying to say about the mystery and the demons. I hope we are following here. Eh? And then a lady all of a sudden falls down and starts shouting. There they are. They are coming. So pastor who was there, and with all these spectators, now these are the demons. Then he really prayed and they cast out, but they refused to come out. Then they said, they are coming. Having had a knowledge of what was happening, I told pastor now, I think if they have refused to come, let me try to see whether they can listen to me. But not in that, from the spiritual angle. So I talked to this lady, I'm giving her real life, eh? not long time ago, I talked to this lady, and I realized that Issues of the mind are real. She, ha she was going through a very difficult time and she had not paid her rent for three months. And the day before, the landlord had told her that we will be coming to close that house. And when she finished the Sabbath, after saying happy Sabbath, happy day, she was faced the reality that she was going to a house probably which was closed and they had come. And that is what was the struggle. We went to her and we truly found that the, the house had been closed. 
I am trying to explain the mind in that manner that it is not always necessary demons, but it is about the issues of the mind which you may not be able to see. Allow me to say this, that in the course of this week, I am going to try and demystify and try to explain and really demonstrate that indeed the mind is real and it has issues, we have diseases of the mind. Before I finish today, I also want to ask a question. Is there a difference between mental disorders or mental illnesses and madness? That is another problem that we always have. That when you, people talk about mental health issues, somebody says it is only those people on the road. It is only those people who are talking things that you cannot appreciate. But I want to tell you that statistics have shown that one in every five, please count yourself, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth one could be suffering from a form of mental illness. Hello? Yes, I can see people are counting. That is what the statistics are showing. It is not mine. They are actually real. That has been demonstrated. So when you think that you are so well and you are okay, there are mental health issues. And I want to say, please, if you can't take anything home from this topic, please take this, that madness is not equivalent to mental illness, but it is just one type of a mental illness. What have I just said? That madness is a type of a mental disorder or a mental illness, but it is not equivalent. Unfortunately, what we all think is that when you talk about mental illness, we are two kichwa nimbaya. Hello? That is what is equivalent to that. But I want to tell you, many, many mental disorders, we'll be looking at them, and you'll be surprised that at any one time, you as a person must have actually had that issue in your life. And if you have not gotten, you are likely to get one. Hello? Are we together? And I believe as a family, in the morning, we were told that most issues are coming from family, even mental health issues are within the family. Because the person who is suffering obviously belongs to a family. And that, working together with the Family Life Week, I think it is very, very important that we may be able to understand. Brothers and sisters, I want to say that many families have, have, uh, have suffered some have left, uh, some are, uh, are broken just because of issues of the mind. I say that mental health is highly stigmatized, poorly understood, and it is always at the bottom of the food chain. Whether you are talking about funding, whether you are talking about, you know, in terms of uh, priorities, it is always given the last priority. And we are saying, that actually that is where it starts. Tomorrow, we will be looking at what are these functions of the mind? And you'll be surprised you are nothing but the mind. Hello? We'll be looking at what is it that the mind controls? I know my colleagues will be looking at and say, you know, this mind is neither here nor there. But when you look at the mind and what it controls, and especially when we are looking at issues, diagnosing the uh, uh, ailments or disorders of mind, we look at what you actually do most of the time. And if, if all of us could be able to understand and appreciate what the role of the mind in our lives are, we will take serious, we will take it very seriously and take a lot of time to develop a health mind. That is what I hope that by the time we finish, we'll be able to, uh, to appreciate what is expected of us or what we need to do to develop that mind. Uh, when I was asked to, uh, to speak, my colleagues told me, family life department told me that, please, I know there is so much about mental health, but emphasize more on prevention of mental illnesses. And that is where I will be sticking. But before I do that, before I tell you how to prevent, 
I need to help you to understand what a mind is. Did you know that your mind is actually determines whether you are coming even to church and how you are coming? I'm talking about your appearance. Look at your friend. Please look at one another. It is a product of the mind. Hello? Your appearance is a product of your mind. The state of the mind that really determines on how you are going to look today. And of course, that links a bell in you that yes, sometimes when one is not the mind, that's how you can be able to say, I saw so and so how he was looking. I don't think he's, everything is okay. Do we sometimes make such comments? Yes, so it is the mind that we determine how you are. Did you know that it is the mind which will determine whether you are going to pick anything that has been preached here or not? Many at times, if your mind is not in the right state, if the mind is not healthy, you will stand here, and when you go out there, somebody is asking, how was church today? It was so wonderful. What was the sermon? Ah, it was very powerful. Hello? Dr. Menzer said, don't say it was powerful. When he asks you, what was the topic? Hey, watch it, you really missed. Hello? Meaning that for sure you got nothing. And that is because your mind was not there. So, this mind, this thing which you can't touch, which you can't feel, which you can't see, yet it is so important. So, when we talk about mental health, what is it? It is a state of the mind that is going to help you to cope with the day-to-day -day work and balance in terms of the stresses of life, the demands. Hello? There is the demand and what? The supply. That is the mind that will make you to be able to... When you look at your productivity, it's a product of your mind. So, allow me to say that our minds many at times have let us down and we don't know about it. Issues of the mind are the ones which are going to determine whether you are appreciating your life or you are seeing like nothing happens and you are always hopeless. And I was sharing with my friend, she was like, somebody who is clearly, can he contemplate suicide? I said, yes, it is planned very well, but that does not mean that the mind is okay. And I shared with her, of a, a, a lady, you could see and think that is okay. Two areas I want to share. I, I explain and try to emphasize the state of the mind that we don't know or we don't appreciate Yet it is not your mistake. One Sabbath afternoon or one Sabbath day like today, a lady was, you know, the choir, it was a choir day in one of the towns. And people were very happy. You remember the choir day is the way they can be very nice. People love choir, isn't it? And one of the choir members, a lady was very, very passionate and sang nicely with a big smile. All of us can smile. Hello? When you smile, it doesn't mean your mind is always smiling. That is why we always think that only the people on the road are the ones who are having a problem with the mind. You can smile with your mouth and inside there is nothing. So this lady sang, it's a sad story. And she was very nice. If you told her happy Sabbath, she would tell you happy Sabbath with a smile. And imagine she left that, went home. Little the members know that this lady had already bought food and prepared for her funeral because she left that place and went and hanged herself. When they went home, the food was ready, everything was ready for her funeral. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking about the mind. It is not something that you are going to look at somebody and decide this is the state of the mind of this guy. You can't see anything many at times. Yes, there are sometimes you may see. And that is why creating awareness is very important. In the course of this week, we can be able to, we'll be able to see the signs and symptoms of mental health disorders. 
Please don't miss that one. And sometimes you may not see anything. You may see nothing, nothing completely. Many of you, I'm sure you may be having actually some cases where so and so was doing very well, and the next thing you hear, he or she went. What was in her mind? You didn't see. I managed a very young, promising lady who was a, a, a lawyer, third year lawyer in school. And you know, these are very, I know they are lawyers inside there, you know, they are learned friends, isn't it? Very tough. She was doing law. And uh, one morning, she just wakes up and she was completing a plan that she had, uh, she had actually planned for quite some time. In her mind, it was very clear. She had to die. And she could smile. She said, yes, I had to die. You know, I'm talking about suicide, which, you have, which we, have, we have always had. And for her, she told herself, I will die, but I will die in a, in, I want to die in a five-star hotel. You know, five-star hotel is not cheap. So she had time. The mind had time to plan and save for that. So she had enough money, and a day came to execute her near plans, and she went to the hotel, true to her near. And she went, you know, I'm talking of somebody that I managed, and she's now giving me the story. So when she went there, because she had to be known that she has actually accomplished her long desires, her long desired act, she wrote a message, the one which I don't know about it, I'm not so much digital, I'm analog, but with digital tendency. But then she actually wrote, and she timed the message so that it can reach her friend when she has died. And so she had acted in the hotel, and she finished and she planned. Sometimes I don't want to talk about the methods of water because I don't know what is going through your mind. I might be giving you the, one of the methods. So allow me not to say that. So she actually tried her first method. Unfortunately, she failed. And remember, the timing, the message had gone. That is how I came to go, that's how I got to meet her. So the message went and reached the friend, and the friend was like, what? When the first one failed, she tried the second one. And in the process of waiting for sure to go in the second one, the friend had looked, thanks to the, uh, the digital world, had looked for the contact of the hotel and everything, and had alerted the, the hotel, and they said, do you have a guest by so and so? He said, yes. She's in which room? He said, please rush and break the door. And they went and broke that door and actually rescued her and she was able to find me in a hospital or I found her there. I am giving this as a story. This is now the poorly understood mental health. When this lady came and now we had stabilized her, of course I had to ask for the next of kin to come. The father was so arrogant. You know what he told me? You guys, Anybody with a card you want to admit? My daughter was so well. How can you tell me she's in a hospital doing what? Hello? Isn't it? So to her, it's because we saw that card, the insurance card, and we really wanted money from her, and therefore we admitted her. I tried to explain. She could not appreciate. He could not appreciate. But then... That lady, because now she was realizing that things were not okay, because she was like, Doctor, you mean I'm sick? What I, was, I knew what I was doing. I said, no, it is an illness. And of course, we went with her a checklist. They said, yes, I was feeling like this. I had not been sleeping a lot, but that was not a big deal. It's not only me who doesn't sleep well, hello? And then he said this thing. So we actually made a criteria for severe depression, yet nobody could pick it. So the father could not appreciate that the daughter was sick, and they refused and refused. So the lady tells me, now call my uncle and explain. Maybe my uncle will, uh, will understand. So the uncle was able to understand. My friends, that is why I want you to understand that there is mental illness, and when you are called upon, please understand. So the uncle was able to come to the hospital, and I explained to them the dangers and actions we need to take to be able to stop that. He was the one who agreed to sign for this lady. The father refused. When she improved, 
she was able to actually appreciate and explain how she has been feeling for a couple of months, and yet she did not realize it was a problem. After all, there's what we call psychodynamics of suicide in this mental health issues, whereby somebody yearns and, and admires the other side, and that is all she knew. That lady was able to actually appreciate that mental health is real, and she even wrote in that social media about it. The father came when she's now aware and narrating, and he actually cried about it. He said, I can't believe it. The lady said, Daddy, it is true. This is me, and this is how I was feeling. And that is how I have landed here. It is my hope that as we continue with the series that we'll be able to be ambassadors of mental health, when we try to understand, remember, my three words are be aware, accept, and do what? Act. Take action. I want to stop here as part of the introduction by saying that if you cannot do anything about mental health, please accept that it is there. And it is something that has diseases, even when you have been told in the hospital that you are not suffering from any condition. Before you say that you are being bewitched, before you say that you are actually having maybe demons, please agree that mental health is real and it is going to present as we'll be seeing. Some of them present with all the physical features. I will be talking about a condition called conversion reactive disorder that psychic conflicts, which are the near product of the mind, presents with literally everything, including convulsions, paralysis, the backaches, ladies, the ones we always complain about. Some of us have been operated with no good reason, nothing is there in the back, but you go to the operation because the backache is not going, regardless of what you're doing. Minds are not treated by panadols or painkillers. They have specific medicines that treat them conditions of the mind. That when people come to you and say, I don't know, I, I'm having a headache, I take bando, I ca it can't go, I am not able to sleep, please take them seriously. Many of the people whom we have lost have actually mentioned that I just feel, there's this feeling that tells me I need to die. Or somebody tells me that I am not even interested, I'm no longer interested with my work. One nurse told me that, you know, my brother went to work and he said, he just reached in the work and he sat. He didn't want to, to do anything. And I'm like, what am I supposed to tell her, Dr. Tari? I told her, that guy is sick. By the day when I asked her a few questions, she said, yeah, he has complained of that. But I've never known that is an issue. So mental health issues, many of times they are not seen as issues because they are poorly understood. When somebody tells you, I am not myself, hello? <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't know how to, even the person who is suffering doesn't know what the problem is. And therefore, you don't expect them to tell you exactly what the problem is. I want to finish by saying this, that in diseases or disorders of the mind, it will take another mind to be able to say the mind has a problem. I'm finishing there, hello? Have you ever removed anything from your eye? Can you see anything in your eye unless you use a, a mirror? Can you see? No. Now, if you must see a problem in your mind, it will take another mind to be able to see that there's a problem in that mind. And that is why my A is very key. Aware, be aware, if not for your own, for your friend, your family members, for your colleagues, isn't it? Because it takes another mind to discover a problem in the other mind. That is why even those in extreme, some of you maybe have dealt with, when somebody is truly sick and then you are telling, I think you are sick, he will tell you, I am not sick. Maybe you are the one who is sick. Have you ever heard about that one? Yes they will always say they have no problem, 
Maybe you are the one who has a problem. One time I'm standing, I'm sitting in uh, our, our referral hospital, Madare, and I'm seeing patients. And uh, one is brought, and of course reaching there, him, she knows she's not sick. And she takes over and really she runs. But she was running towards me. Because she thought she was running in a way. She ran up to me and said, you know what? Doctor, I am not sick. I said, yes, you are not. Who is sick? That one. That one, yes. Okay, run and bring him here so that I can treat him. And for sure she ran. The people had brought, picked one of them whom she thought was sick, brought and sat with me, and I treated. Whom did I treat? Hello? So even the people who are sick, I cannot appreciate that they are sick, and that is why you have to be your brother's keeper. May God help us that this time as we continue to drive in mental health, we are not going to miss it because I really want you to understand that the mind can also be sick and the mind needs to be helped. The, 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 the issue is, uh, as time goes by, as difficult times come in the end, as he said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, the mind also finds it very difficult. And that is where we are finding it very many mental health issues currently, and they are not anywhere, but they are just right in the family. Family issues, and especially the family of God, when you know you are a Christian, and people will be looking at you and saying, how? How can you have mental health issues and you are a Christian? Why do you don't believe in God? And we always become in denial. When our children start showing something like this, and then we say, no, 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 it can't be. It is real. We are not yet in heaven. Until we go to heaven, mental health issues must be dealt with. May God bless you as you plan to come so that we can be able to look at it. My topic is understanding mental health issues. May God bless you.